welcome to a care collab. In my case, this is an update on my Vanda Denisoniana. And joining in on this care collab are Orchidea, the Orchid Saga, and plants and other things. I'm happy to be able to be part of this care collab because this Vanda is a victim of my overdosing on the copper fungicide in 2021. She is still with me. Now, what you're seeing here looks a little bit worse for wear. There are several reasons for that, not just the result of a copper overdose, because if that were the case, she would already be dead. My Denisoniana is very, very yellow. Currently, she lives on the west side of my patio because she has to endure the outdoors despite my temperatures having dropped to 8 degrees Celsius in this past winter. Her size doesn't permit me to bring her inside. Her roots are quite unruly. So these roots are very, very precious to me, clearly. Having almost poisoned her with an overdose of copper, every single root counts. Whether it is viable or not, we shall find out because I will be cutting into some tissue to see how the copper has affected the velamen, which normally should not be affected. So eight degrees Celsius has been her minimum so far. And the reason I have her on the west side is not just because she gets a lot of light with a reflecting white facade, but it is a pocket of warmth. If at night it was maybe 10 or 11 degrees simply because of that little protected corner, I prefer to think 8 degrees because that is what my temperature sensor says outdoors in my south-facing covered portico, which should be much more protected but does get exposed to some colder winds that can affect the temperature. So I prefer to consider that she's dealing with 8 degrees Celsius and if she is in 10 degrees, even better. But look at her. You can see that her crown is intact. She is growing. Now, we can also consider what is going on with the leaves. They do look a little bit dehydrated in parts, a little bit more obvious in the lower parts. But that is normal. That is something I'm not so concerned about because I have seen other vandas of mine decline with that sign of dehydration and they are already dead. So she is holding on and she is growing at the top. That gives me a lot of hope that my Vanda Denisoniana is going to be okay. And her yellow leaves are also a reflection of the fact that she has somewhat shut down a little bit to preserve her energy while the conditions are not in her favor. But in the past week and a half, our temperatures have risen approximately three degrees during the day. The bite has gone out of the air, which is wonderful. And you can see how the crown is starting to respond. It's more upright. It is actually starting to react. And that was only in the past couple of days. I am really, really hopeful that my Vanda Donisoniana is going to be okay. Now, I'm gonna get my sprayer. We're gonna spray the roots and we're gonna look at how they transform themselves and see how the copper dose has affected the individual roots. All the roots look so white and calcified. It's actually quite a scary image. But this is also a result of the fact that the orchid is shut down during the winter to conserve energy. I spray her every day like this with water. Even the keiki that's down there, I'm not bothered if anything gets into the crown. My ambient air is so, so dry. This one has not shown me any sign of stem rot or crown rot or anything like that. On the contrary, it's almost like it needs it. I'm also very, very mindful of spraying a lot with plain and clean RO water. And you can see how the roots are darkening. Some of the older roots still have traces of algae on them. Of course, the copper poison took care of that. But if it's black, it could be the velamen. It could also just be the fact that the algae has died away, leaving those stains. My concern is how well is the velamen performing? So I have been waiting for this care collab in order to cut into some of the roots to show you and analyze and check and see if there is any velamen that is still viable and that is actually absorbing water. They may all look black, but you see there's one up here that's looking a lot more promising than the one back here that I'm spraying right now. So let's go have a look. Let's see how the velamen is on this root. It feels firm, that means nothing. And check it out, it is completely dead. And that is because of the copper. That is not because of lack of watering. So I am very happy to be able to say that I can trim back this dead root and not look at it anymore. Okay, now 
We have little branches down here that are clearly dead as well. But we have branches at the end that look a little bit more greener. So what are we going to do there? Well, a root tip is a root tip. And if it branches, we can always cut it. Controversial, I know. But in order to analyze how healthy the velamen is, this is a needs must situation. And we have a green root. How well the velamen is actually functioning and performing its task is another matter altogether. But again, a lot, a lot of clean water will hopefully keep its functioning alive, for lack of a better word. This root I'm not going to cut into. It's got little bumps here that look suspicious as if they will not progress. They've been like this for almost eight, nine months, all part of the reaction of the copper overdose. It would be nice to see these branch. But there's a root up here on the right. I'm going to reposition the orchid, the one that's sticking out into the air, and I want to cut into that. Now you see how nice and firm it is along this line right here. Looks like it is absorbing. And then, you know, it's got a growing tip at the end here that's gone dormant, but that looks really, really dry to me. This root has not branched. All the other ones coming out from the stem have shown me that it has a potential to branch. So let's give that one a little look-see. It looks promising, but you can see how the velamen is almost like, you know, too thin. It's like the sponge has gone, at least from the tip. See that? That's not how a healthy growing tip should look. Shall we go in a little bit further? Similar situation, but at least the velamen is there. It's okay. It's green. It would be interesting to see if this root will decide to actually branch. Now, I have lots and lots of other roots that I'm going to be trimming off that are clearly, clearly dead. They are impeding me moving the orchid and actually doing something with it without always snagging on them. So finally, I'm getting this job done, which is awesome. And you're probably wondering why I just don't put her in a bucket to soak her. Well, all these cracks here along the root, it's when I used to do that, and they would always bump and abrade against the tub. So I can't soak her in a bucket anymore. I tried that recently. And um, yeah, even the bucket that I had, trying to preserve water, it's just the span of the orchid is just far too big. So I have hopes that she is going to make it. She is still pretty much in snooze mode, but she is not dead. Considering that I've lost some, this one is going to make it. We're waiting for nice warm temperatures so that she can get back up to speed. And then she will go back to the covered area of the south facing portico where there is a lot more shade. The amount of direct sunshine she's getting this time of year is simply because of the winter sun. She would like to have a lot of bright light, but during the summer, there is no way that she's on my west side. That's when I hang her up into the south facing portico where she gets a lot of light in the morning because that is coming from the east. But as the sun is higher in the sky, most of the day she is in the shade. The only thing I have to fight then with her are my hot, dry winds. But I'm very encouraged to see Green Belayman whether it is functioning 100% is beside the point. If it's only functioning 50%, there's plenty of roots where she can absorb water. And I'm very encouraged that I have a branching root system because if needs must, I will trim other roots back, but only if I see new roots coming out branching. You see, the fact that the velamen is damaged may even work against any kind of branching potential. But with an orchid this size, there has got to be a point in this velamen where some branching might occur and that would just be amazing if not in actual fact encourage new roots from the stem as the temperatures have warmed up a little bit i am very very cautiously already applying some seaweed in the water at 30 40 parts per million round about there just to encourage the growth hormones push them in there a little bit basically if you're telling me you're waking up with the crown looking the way it is then I am going to be right there with my sprayer and my seaweed. So that has just started this morning that the seaweed is starting to be applied. Fingers crossed that when we see her next time, we will be able to maybe announce a spike. 
I am going to now happily be trimming away dirt and gunk and everything off this orchid where I can without destroying nice roots like this one right here. In the meantime, thank you so very, very much for watching my video. Links to the other channel's videos will be in the description. I am certain that they have much more favorable conditions to keep their Banda Denisoniana happy and possibly you will see a much, much happier orchid on their channel. But I still have her. That's more than I can say for the other big vanders that I've lost. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition, please, that you stay safe and take care. Bye.